Eliza? Have you tried Sachiko stitching? The Japanese style of stitching? I have wanted to try it for a while, but I kept getting put off by books and various blog posts and whatever. Seeing that the stitching has to be perfect. Like in this book that I bought a few years ago. Let's see if I can find... Ah yes, here. The way that it says that if your stitches cross where they sort of meet each other, that is wrong. Maybe it is, I don't know. But it just seemed too prescriptive to me. I just want to stitch. I don't want to worry about whether I have perfect stitches or whether they meet in a perfect way. So although I had the thimble and I've got several skeins of Sachiko thread, I've never really done it until now because a little while ago I came across a Domestica course by a Japanese uh, Sachiko artist called Atsushi Futatsuya I hope I'm saying that somewhat correctly um, I've been following him on Instagram for quite a while and I was really excited to see he had a, a Domestica course so I bought the course, so this is not sponsored by Domestica or anything because I wanted to try it and watching the course made me want to try Sachiko straight away. The way he talks about Sachiko makes so much sense to me compared to those other books and websites or whatever. It's not about the perfect stitches. Hooray! <laughs> Although with practice the stitches do become more uniform, but isn't that the case with anything you do? I mean, I certainly know that my stitches are a lot more uniform now than when I started doing embroidery. You should see my French knots from 15 years ago compared to now. Big difference. Lots of French knots. So the way Atsushi talks about Sashiko, again, there's no focus on these perfect corners or the stitches meeting up properly or that the stitches have the same length. And it, it just it makes sense. And if you look at his work, and he's been doing it for many years, the stitches do cross each other, where well, maybe they shouldn't, technically, or whatever, but it's no less beautiful. So, as I understand it, Sashiko comes from a rural tradition. It had a practical purpose, to make the cloth stronger, to make it last longer, and to avoid having to mend the cloth. Although you can use Sachiko to mend cloth. And in the context of working on Sachiko in, I don't know, a farmhouse, I imagine, hundreds of years ago, with no electric lighting, it makes sense that you're not checking every single stitch, that you're not checking that they're not overlapping, or that they're the same size and there probably wouldn't have been time for it I imagine that you would have many other chores to do so you wouldn't have time to watch every single stitch it would have to be simple, it would have to be quick so that you could get the job done as it were and although the stitching would still be a pleasure and the pattern would be pretty you'd want to work it fairly quickly and then 
the method would also have to be fairly simple. So here's one little test I did of one very common pattern. I cannot remember what it's called in Japanese. I probably wouldn't pronounce it properly anyway. But I think it's the hemp leaf. And I think it's really beautiful. It looks really intricate but it's actually quite simple. Although when I was drawing this I kept messing it up and in the end although I'd, I'd used a water-soluble pen like this to draw it. I messed it up so many times in the end I had to just draw it with a pen you can see where I've messed it up but it's fine it's just to try it out. I really enjoyed working on this but this was just a little test because what I really want to do is work with this beautiful thread. Although traditionally surgical stick stitching is white on indigo blue cloth but I'm a colour magpie so when I saw this I just had to have it. That's it. So I'm going to work it on this pink fabric. This is not traditional Japanese fabric but this is what I had and it seems similar so this is what I'm going to use when I was drawing this pattern I don't know if you can see but I still haven't got the hang of it because I drew a vertical line here which is not necessary but never mind, this is a water soluble pencil that I've used so that will just disappear once I've done stitching it. So the way Atsushi shows the stitching to put on a thimble. I think I'll take off my ring. You work in a rocking motion instead of a stepping motion where you do one stitch then another and then another. With the rocking motion you do multiple stitches at a time. Which also makes sense because that makes it quicker so you can get more done faster and also there are no knots which is quite interesting because I'm used to doing knots when I work on my embroidery although occasionally I will use a waist knot. But apparently the way that Sachiko thread is made it will sort of hold itself and that's why you don't need to tie any knots. So I'm interested to see how how it holds up. I don't know what I'm going to make with this or what I'm going to use it for but I do know based on this one that I enjoy stitching it very much and it's very simple just up and down in a rocking motion, catching the stitches, or rather catching the fabric. And then every so often you pull the thread through and make sure to flatten it out so you don't bunch up the fabric too much. And you 
just follow the line and I like how he talks about following the lines in the simplest way and the 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 straightest line that you can get so let me just pull this through so for example you do one of these long horizontal lines here and then when you get to the corner you don't tie off you just find the next straight line so for example this one and then when I get down to here I go back up here and there and there so you want to make it as simple and as easy as possible at least that's how I understood the way he was showing it in the course I think it's a very beautiful way of stitching that it's so simple and I think I've said that it's simple several times now of course simple does not necessarily mean that it's easy even if it looks easy it certainly looks easy when he does it like I said, it did take me a, <laughs> a few tries to get my head around drawing the pattern here. And it will take me some practice, probably a lot of practice, to get used to the best way of stitching the pattern in the most time economic fashion. And I think once you get used to the technique of this rocking motion of the stitching, you could probably almost do it with your eyes closed. And certainly while you're watching TV. It makes me think of experienced knitters and crocheters who take their projects to the cinema and sit there and work on it in the dark and if you're not used to knitting or crocheting you must be thinking what on earth how can they know what they're doing but it's all in the hands Once you get used to working a craft, your hands can almost do it without you doing anything, or at least being properly conscious about it. I think I still need some practice in this straightening out of the stitches but that's fine I like trying something new I think the beginner's mindset is very important although I've been doing embroidery for many years now I like trying something new Another thing I really like about surgical stitching is that it's just running stitch. One of the most simple stitches and one of the easiest stitches to learn. And yet it can be really beautiful and so intricate. If you look at some surgical 
beautiful work, for example, on Instagram. And you can look up at Sushi on Instagram. I think he is a Sachigo story on there. I'll put a link in the description. But I, f I find it so fascinating that you can do something so beautiful with something so simple. Look how effective it is. I've got so many stitches on here and all in, in one go almost. It would be a lot slower if I was to do this in a hoop and do one stitch at a time. And generally, if I am doing a lot of running stitch, I don't use a hoop because it is quicker to do it in this rocking motion. Although I've never done it quite like this using the thimble, which really helps because it provides support for the needle and you're not stabbing yourself, which is always a good thing. You don't want to stab yourself. So what about you? Have you tried surgical stitching? What do you think of it? Did you try it on a course, either in person or something online? Or did you try it from a book? I would love to know what you think of Sashiko and if you have tried it. And I can highly recommend Trying the Domestica course, again, not sponsored. I bought it myself. It's very beautiful. I can easily see myself with a Sachiko project on the go that I can work on while I'm watching TV. Let's see if I can line up this stitch here. Will they cross? Yeah, they will. But it's fine. I will be back with this project one day once I have finished it. Maybe I'll turn it into something. What should I make? I'm thinking maybe a, a bag or something. Because it's not really big enough for anything else. We'll see. Have a great day and happy stitching.